My name is Sharice Bruin. Um, I'm the creative director and owner behind Sharice Styles, a lifestyle fashion brand. I do fashion styling, wardrobe styling, image consulting. Um, I do modeling, client, um, talent acquisition. I do a myriad of different things. Fashion columnist, content creator, influencer, blogger, all of it. <laughs> it took a, a few months to figure out how I could make a living off of doing it. When I started Cherie Styles, I started it because I was not seeing enough black and brown faces on digital and print media and marketing on commercials, things that go out nationwide to from a city that was mostly African American. That's why I started because I was just like, I know some really talented black and brown individuals that we're not getting jobs. I have always dealt with the subtle microaggressions. The people that are empowered don't look like us. The people that own these publications and news channels, we are taking a stand and we want to see everyone represented equally. You can even see that in certain industries here. Like you can't rise certain past a certain level if you're a certain race, and that's usually black or Hispanic people. I think that people can go out and be intentional and actually mean it and wanting to involve certain groups. If I can do it, so can you. If I can go into places to where I'm uncomfortable and I'm the only person that looks like me in the room, absolutely you should be able to step out of your comfort zone. Like, hey, I'm an ally, like I want to do better. And then people actually saying that they want to do better and putting action behind it. That means like, I'm gonna let another facialist do me today, or I'm gonna go try somewhere else to get my nails done. Like, there's no shortage of where people can stretch out to be more inclusive, um, because it's literally like, there's room for everyone. And then I think the trend is for people of means, of celebrity status, they have black and brown friends and then they see what they have been doing, they attach themselves to it and then they make it popular. I don't wanna say that they want to be black because no, if you ask yourself the question, do you wanna be black? No, you don't wanna be black because you see the, what we have to deal with. So no, you don't wanna be black. You just wanna have certain features. I don't care if, if someone that doesn't look like me have braids, understand why you wear braids. Like, just understand where that trend came from or what locks may mean to someone. Like how we see corporations just firing people or to giving people the option of, y'all need to like do something with your hair. Dreadlocks are not popular. This is the hair that grows out of my scalp. But the changes that need to happen are not just on a personal level. They're systematic. I feel like we are in a 21st century civil rights movement. I do things for my nieces and my nephews at this point. I don't want them to have to suffer and struggle. So I'm gonna do everything that I possibly can to make the world, the United States, a better place for them to live, to achieve, I don't even wanna say to have an American dream, but just to have their dreams realized and actualized and multiplied to have generational wealth that they've been, we've been robbed of trying to have for decades.